right, good afternoon, everyone. It's um, great to be here in front of everybody, competitors, colleagues, friends. Um, so I'm going to talk about how you can empower your staff and get exceptional guest experience using technology. Um, a quick background in Intelity, they're the kind of global leader in guest experience platform. So we have mobile apps, which some people like and some people obviously don't. Uh, we have in-room tablets, we have straight mobile, we have a back-end staff system, and more importantly, we tie all this stuff together to allow your, your staff and guests to engage and deliver an excellent um, guest service. I'm going to read a quick quote, not a quote, but um, some information from the latest PwC report, which I nicked off Julie's uh, LinkedIn page. Um, and what they're saying post-pandemic and what's going to happen in the hospitality hotel industry in 2021 to 2022, technology has a power to transform both front and back of house operations. In reference to the pandemic, tactical investment to provide a contactless experience for guests can work for both reassuring guests and also managing staff levels and costs. Back of house with the need to manage demand and operational costs carefully, technology can enable businesses to engage in the long-term planning needed to see themselves through leaner periods. So I think if you listen to the sessions this morning, um, we knew coming out of the pandemic that staffing was going to be an issue. We knew Brexit was going to be an issue. We didn't know how bad of an issue it was going to be. We didn't realize everyone decided to get a career change at the same time. Ultimately, hotel business is still a people business. Um, the hotel is about the stay, about the experience, about the engagement. Whether that's a premier inn or high-end Dorchester, it really depends on what experience you're choosing, but ultimately it's about the people who drive that experience. It's the same with technology, so can you imagine booking a flight, checking into a, to a flight with paper or not, not an app? Um, so it's really important that we, we engage technology for both driving the, the guest experience and improving the operational uh, experience. So if you look at things, what today's guests, oh, I knew this was going to happen. Dan, when you see this, he likes to put in transitions in the slide. So what do the guests need? They need safety for obvious reasons, and this is both from a COVID-type health safety, but also from emergency safety. You know, if you're in trouble, you want to have an option to click on a button. Cleanliness is pretty, pretty obvious. We need that these days, the, the whole cleaning process. And when you look at the staff and the hotel cleaners, that's a massively changed process compared to two years ago. You want on-demand accessibility. You want to get what you want when you want it, whether that's uh, food, whether that's your room key, whether that's communicating to the staff. And funny enough, you want consistency. Someone brought that up this morning. You want that experience to be the same depending on what you're doing, where you are, which brand you have. You want that consistent experience. Flexibility. You want to be able to pick and choose what you want, when you want. Personalization, this is the key. Uh, you want to be able to communicate. You want special offers for you. You want the, the property to know who you are and what you want. Clear communication and obviously convenience. Um, convenience is a big thing. Um, John was speaking about ordering the food. So you want to be able to order that food, have it delivered when you want, have it delivered to a location that you want, and have, it, have to pay for it how you want to pay for it. Hotels, what do they need? Very similar. They need engagement with guests. You want deep business insights into what that guest's doing and how your, your hotel is performing. You want revenue driving tools because ultimately you've got to save costs, but you've got to drive revenue. So how do you use this technology to increase your revenue? Always on marketing. If you've got capacity in a restaurant, you've got spa capacity, you want to be able to deliver these messages to say, hey, we've got a special deal. Um, you want that available all the time. 24-7 guest staff communication. Uh, it's very key to have that, and that can be any method. So one of the things about a lot of these platforms is you've got to be technology agnostic. So if you're in the Middle East, everyone's using WhatsApp. Some places use text, some want in-app messaging. It really depends on what that customer wants. You want flexible resources, efficiency and automation, and you want future-proof operations. You want to know what you're investing in is going to be there in the future, and the company's going to be there as well. Right, using technology, A, you want to use it to improve guest service, 
you want to gain back time. You want to save time. You want actionable data and how you can improve your operation. And you want automation to reduce noise. And those are the three chunks of, uh, that we're going to talk about and how we can use this technology. I told you he likes transitions. Uh, the first thing is mobile check-in. So the guest journey can be as you want. So I've got an example up here where you can get your reservations online. You can have them in the app. You can actually pay online if you want. So you can actually have, I think um, someone also mentioned that the PMS is the kind of center of the universe, the kind of fountain of truth. So literally, you can, if you haven't paid, technology will let you know that you haven't paid and you have that option to put in a, a compliant payment process. Once you've paid, you've also got an option to, to upload your ID. So cer certain countries have different regulations. You can simply take a photo of your ID and send that into the PMS, or if you want to use a bit of AI, you can actually take a photo of the ID, take a selfie, does a bit of magic, and yep, we think it's you. And again, that will be really important in more uh, automated hotels, more uh, service apartments, more apart hotels who really don't want any staff at the property. So as much technology as you can use to limit um, the, your staff costs, a lot of people are doing that. Finally, you can then check in. Um, you can get that room, and that room will only be allocated once you've, you've uh, the PMS has told you that it's free. And lastly, you get your mobile key. And again, um, currently the keys have to be in an app. Um, you can do some QR code stuff, but it's very insecure, and normally is, um, Again, it's not very safe. So for the next foreseeable future, um, keys come into the app, um, and then you can check in, log in, do the whole lot, and you're into that room. So gaining back time on communications. So again, you can have SMS, chat, WhatsApp, WeChat, whatever method you want. It doesn't matter. The whole key is communicating with that guest. And that communication can start before they check in, during they check in, and after they check out. Again, it's really key to have that ability to communicate. You can do staff-led and automated push notifi notifications. So again, this is key, again, if you're trying to drive incremental revenue, or you've got messages you want to put out to, a, to the whole community in the hotel, or if you want to send them out to the staff. I mentioned before, promotions and upsell opportunities. This is key, again, to drive revenue. If you've got capacity, you need to fill that up, whether that's the restaurant or a spa. Um, and again, sending those out is a fantastic way to uh, increase revenue. And again, I mentioned guests can choose a method of preferred communication. So it's all about choice for the guest, not dictating what technology they have to use. On the staff side, they can then answer when ready. So again, they're not having to fumble around. They've got the tools to, to engage with, that, with the guest when appropriate. Business intelligence. So again, everything that's done is tracked, monitored, measured, reported on. So you can see how the hotel's performing. You can see how the technology's performing. You can tweak it. It's all about the little knobs and dials. It's not about a big silver bullet. It's about lots of little bullets. Um, you can drill down to individual staff performance and load balancing. You can remap efficient time to have more valuable guest-facing time again. The more you, you rely on technology to handle the mundane things, the more you've got great time for your staff to engage with your guests. Actionable data. Again, business intelligence, it's the key to everything. So everything that comes through you can man manage and get that rich guest data. You know what they like. You know what they want. You know what they've done. Any kind of open request you can manage. You've got real-time availability, easy to access at a glance. You can show recent and pertinent information. And you can actually wow the guest. Um, again, it's very critical that you've got this data and you know what's what going on in that property and how you can really manage that process much better.
content manage, management. Again, this has been brought up before. The whole idea is everything you've got is changing rapidly. You've got the ability to go in and update that comp content, change that content, uh, make real-time changes for anything on the property. You can use performance and sales data to optimize and eliminate time-wasting activities. Scared to touch these buttons. Again, part of the solution and part of is the full back end. If you've got all this technology on, a, on an app or on a web thing, it's got to go someplace. So it's really key to you've got a back end system and workflow management. So your staff will have an app or a web app or a web page. Um, and again, they've got that ability to action those requests on the fly. Um, you can queue the systems, you can prioritize. The whole key is to take those requests, take that information, and put it to the right uh, staff member at the right time. It's also a great way to reduce um, any of these task switching times. So you've got the ability to prioritize and, and move, um, move the requests around. You'll know what, what's, what's important and what's not. And again, common thread is you leave more time for serving your guest. Because um, ultimately, that's, that's the key it's going forward, is how are you going to kind of capitalize on all this technology investment to go through and give that excellent service. Real-time escalations and notifications. You can drive timely responses to the guest issues. Um, again, this is key because you're going to have limited staff, you're going to have limited front, front office, uh, limited reception, and the key is to kind of really automate as much as possible. Um, service recovery, it's an opportunity to help guests before you get a negative review. So a lot of these platforms have a built-in trip advisor, so you can actually get a, a pulse of what the guests are feeling at the time of the property. Um, and again, it's a great way to stop something going out um, to TripAdvisor or some of the other review, review systems. Finally, automation. Um, again, this is a key for everything. Smart AI to offset some of the staff workload. So again, anything that can be automated, anything that can be kind of pushed through the system without having someone touch it, that's definitely a benefit and the way to go. I mentioned that in the... Um, facial recognition for the uh, uh, self-identification. You can target chat communications, CSAT, guest analysis, and workflow routing. Again, automate, automate, automate. And you can leave ambiguous tasks for staff and use AI to profess, uh, provide the suggestions. Again, this is a common theme that's come up uh, today. So results, a blend of technologies and tools can yield a significantly better guest experience. Here's a good example. Uh, a property that uses technology, um, they literally can go change the way the guests interact with their hotel and automate staff workflows. It's a 300, 302 room property, a uh, luxury property, a spa. Um, and what they found is they saved 73 hours monthly, full-time equivalent hours. So that's you know, a good chunk of staff. 94% um, guest engagement, again, key to engage with those guests. 48 service requests processed daily. Uh, 130K lift in annual dining revenue, again, pushing through the app, those, those dining orders. 5K plus service requests, uh, 100 a day. And work orders, 60 a day. So again, by automating this whole system, you can really track and measure how it's doing and then tweak it uh, every month as you're going forward. So that's what I've got. Um, I don't know if you've got questions. Any follow-up questions? No? OK.
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it depends on, on the property and the type of service, but, but typically if you automate all of these requests and automate everything, you're, you're not dealing with somebody taking a phone call, calling somebody else, putting that order down to the kitchen. So it's kind of like the incremental gain that you get from all of these automation, I guess, requests. Same with maintenance. Every request that goes through, it'll get tracked and, and prioritized to the right team. Um, the staff will then obviously go in and, and handle that request at the right time with, with the app and close that down. So again, it's, it's by just the little, little tweaks the whole time um, that you, you can get these incremental savings throughout it. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>